Hi everybody and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every single time and it doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we have you covered. So before we get into games for Major League Baseball for July the 11th, I want to remind you to join so you will have access to the VIP Club section where you'll have all the tools to help you make your picks. So we're heading into the All-Star break but we have one final weekend and teams are heading into the break wanting to get on a hot streak so they have a chance for a run in the second half of the season. So we have several games to look at, so let's get started. Chicago and Baltimore, we're not going to look at that one. Here we have the Atlanta Braves and the Miami Marlins. In this National League East battle, the third place Braves face the last place Marlins. Both teams have played well over the last 10 games, 6-4 and four over their last 10. You can see the Braves are 3-3 three and three over their last 6, and the Marlins are four and two over the last six. The Marlins are burning hot at the moment compared to average for the Braves. Ian Anderson is scheduled to pitch for the Braves. He is five and four with a 3.27 ERA. And Pablo Lopez is set to pitch for the Marlins. He is four and five with a 2.94 ERA. If you look at the power rankings indicator, you can see that the Marlins have a plus 29 to plus seven advantage right now. If you look at the totals predictor, if you're considering the over-under bet, you can see that Atlanta is trending in games under the line. They have for a bit of time now, and so has Miami. They've been under the under the line for quite a bit of the time now. So that's a good indication to bet the under. But let's take a look at the uh, scores predictor. If you look at the scores predictor, this has another low-scoring outcome, 6 to nothing in favor of Miami. But take a look at the confidence in prediction, only 39.8%. So take a look at this closer to the game time before making your decision and the, the odds are not yet posted for the game so take that into consideration as well. If you look at the pitcher profit oscillator you see that uh, Ian Anderson is a minus 20 compared to minus 19 for Lopez and neither one of them have been solid bets but in the end I think that the Marlins will come away with the win and a low scoring game. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Boston Red Sox. The Phillies Head to Boston, sitting fourth in the National League East, and the Red Sox are leading the way in the American League East. You can see both teams are average status at the moment. The Phillies have won three out of their last six games, actually four out of their last six games, excuse me, and the Red Sox have lost their last two, and they are three and three over their last six. Aaron Noah is scheduled to pitch for the Phillies. He is six and five with a four point five three ERA, and Nick Pavetta is on the mound for the Red Sox. He is seven and three with a four point oh nine ERA. You can see that Pavetta has been a better bet at plus $686 on the picture of Profit Oscillator compared to um, Noah at minus $111. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see that the Phillies have a plus 23 to plus 12 advantage in that category. If you're considering the over-under, you see the Phillies are trending in games over the line, Boston trending in games under the line, so it's best to avoid the over-under in that scenario. If you look at the score predictor, it is Boston by an 8-5 to five advantage, but only 47.5% confidence in that prediction. I think that Boston should win the game and cover, but expect a lower scoring game than the 13 runs total in the prediction. Okay, so the next game we're going to look at here then is just scroll down through a full slate of games for July the 11th. The Cincinnati Reds and the Milwaukee Brewers. In this National League Central battle, the Reds and the Brewers face off. The Brewers are in first place in the division, while the Reds are in second place. You can see that the Reds are burning hot at the moment, winners of five out of the last six. And the Brewers are average stats at the moment. You can see that they are 3-3 three and three over their last six. Brandon Woodruff is scheduled to pitch for Milwaukee versus Luis Castillo for the Reds. Woodruff is 7-4 to 2.10 ERA and plus 452 on the pitcher profit oscillator, so he's been an excellent bet. Castillo, on the other hand, is 3-10 with a 4.81 ERA and has been a really bad bet at minus $871. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you can see here that Cincinnati is at plus 22 in Milwaukee. They were up 
as high as plus 29 just a week ago, and they have plummeted down to plus 8. If you look at the scores predictor, we see that we have the Reds winning by an 8-7 to seven score with almost 69% confidence, so we're expecting a high-scoring game. If you look at the totals predictor, it's showing a little bit something different. The Reds playing in games trending well under the line, Milwaukee trending over the line, so it's a little bit of a conflicting kind of a point of view here, depending on, on how you want to look at it. Right now, I say wait to see what the line is set at, you know, the, the over-under line is set before you place the bet on this one, as far as the over-under goes. But as far as who we think is going to win the game, I am confident that the Reds will come away with a road win and cover the spread. Tigers and the Twins. The Yankees and the Astros. The Yankees enter fourth in the American League East, and the Astros are on top in the American League West. Both teams are burning hot at the moment. You can see the Yankees have won their last three after losing three prior to that. And the Astros are burning hot winners of their last six games. If you look at the power rankings indicator, you can see here that both teams are on the upward trend, not surprisingly, with Houston up to plus 27 points and the Yankees right behind them at plus 25 points. Neither team has, has named their starting pitcher yet, so take a look at that before the uh, the game starts, and also the odds are not yet currently posted. But if we look at the score prediction, here we have the Astros with a 9-1 to edge with 48% confidence in that prediction. When I consider the over and under, you can see that the Yankees are playing in games trending slightly over the line. The Astros are playing in games trending slightly over the line as well. So betting the over is probably a safe play in this one. I would do that as well. But again, check the line beforehand. And as far as who will be the winner of this game, I think the Astros have the advantage playing at home, and they will win and cover. Now we want to look at the Cardinals and the Cubs. This is the last matchup that we want to look at for the week. The Cardinals are averaged down at the moment. They've lost their last game, and you can see over the last uh, six, they are 3-3. Three and three. The Cubs are dead up. They just broke a very long losing streak, and they're 1-5 over their last six. The pitching matchup is Adam Wainwright for the Cardinals, and actually the Cubs have not yet named their starting pitcher, but Wainwright for the season is 7-5 with a 3.58 ERA, and you can see that he is minus 107 on the pitcher profit oscillator, so he has not been a solid bet. He's been a very poor bet, actually, at the moment, so consider that before making your bet. As far as the toes predictor goes, you see the Cardinals are playing in games trending well under the line lately at minus 4 points. The Cubs are playing in games slightly over the line, but they have been under up until just recently. Well, what does the scores predictor show? The scores predictor shows the Cardinals with a narrow 6-5 edge with 49% confidence in the prediction. So that's interesting. With the 11 runs total, it's interesting to see whether that's going to be over or under the line. As you see right now, the lines have not yet been posted. So take a look at this as well as the line before making your bet. As far as the outcome goes, I believe the Cardinals are, are the better team at the moment, and the Cubs have not proven that they have gotten back onto their winning ways yet, and I believe the Cardinals will win this one and cover. You can see there's still some several other matchups here that you can take a look at, so you can take a browse through these at your leisure. So there you have it. Those are the games for July the 11th, right before the All-Star break. Enjoy the weekend. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.